Part one of this video did way better than I expected, so let's do it again. This is five more things you didn't know about Paul McCartney's Beatle basses. This is a 501 Hofner Mersey, and make sure to check out part one of this series for an awesome tone demo and even more facts. Number one, the pick garden, or as my British friends might say, scratch plate. Now, a lot of people are curious why Paul's Hofner doesn't look the same now as it did during the height of Beatlemania. The answer to that is the pick guard. Hofner bases come with a pretty distinctive celluloid pickguard. However, Paul removed his in 1966. Because countless photos were taken of the Beatles during their touring years, we can actually pinpoint the exact date that this occurred. The Beatles played Washington, D.C. on August 15, 1966, and photos from D.C. Stadium show the base with the pickguard still attached. The very next day though, August 16, 1966, the Beatles played JFK Stadium in Philadelphia. The pickguard is gone. As for what actually happened to it, I have no idea why it was removed or what actually happened to the guard itself. On a slightly related note, a lot of people actually choose to remove the pickguard because the celluloid releases a gas that can corrode nickel when stored in the case for long periods of time. Now this has nothing to do with Paul's choice to remove the pick guard, but it's just something I thought I'd mention. Number two, and this is the one that surprised me the most when I first got it. These Hofners have no fret markers on them, and believe me, you don't realize how much you miss them until they're gone. So for the non-guitarists out there, when you're looking down at the neck, you'll see these little dots. These basically mark out the frets for you, the 3rd, 5th, 7th, and so on. It's standardized on literally every guitar I've ever seen, except this one. There's just nothing there. Now I want you to think about this for a second. This means when you're playing the bass, there's no way to see where you are on the fretboard without actually turning the bass towards yourself, which is kind of awkward to do, especially if you're playing live. When I discovered this fact, it blew my mind. This meant that Paul performed live all those years, singing and playing at the same time, relying purely on muscle memory and feel. What a pro. Of course, even pros need to take a peek once in a while. Now as for why these bases don't come with fret markers, I don't know. The Ignition, the Icon, the Contemporary, all the other models, the imported ones, they all have them. But not this one, not the German Hofners, and I don't know why. Paul's doesn't either. Number three, Paul primarily uses one tone setting on his bass, but there's something kind of interesting about the switch arrangement. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so first things first. Paul's primary setting is the first switch set to solo, which basically boosts the volume, bass pickup switch set to on and treble off. But you also need to know that these plates are mounted on the guitars upside down. This is so that the text can be read properly from the player's perspective. But all you really need to know is that if somebody's looking at you, like in a photo, the switches are going to appear in an up-down-up arrangement. Think of it like a little valley. Looking at photos of Paul in the 1960s, this is always the case. Up-down-up, basically throughout his entire career with the Beatles. Now check out the Hofner today. Notice anything? It's upside down. The switch arrangement is now down-up-down. Down. What happened? Our valley has become a mountain. Now I have a theory as to why this is the case, and that theory is gravity. So my buddy Greg, who is a Hofner expert, told me that Paul's switches are basically completely worn out and they don't click into place like they used to. The McCartney solution is a bit of rolled up gaffer tape wedged into the cavity to prevent the switches from moving around. With the plate upside down, however, only one switch needs to be propped up. The other two have gravity on their side. I've also heard that Paul has had the switches replaced, or at least repaired since then, so the tape might just be there to prevent them from moving around. This guy has been with me more than 20 years, the guy who does all my guitars, John Hamill! Gotta catch it, I can't not catch it. Gotta catch it. A 
lot of people think that Paul's bass was originally a right-handed model and modified in some way. This simply isn't true, but what actually is interesting is that the neck is technically a right-handed design. So here is a right-handed Hofner 501 model. If you were to mirror this to a lefty model, you see how that part that curves outward on the headstock is still further on the bottom? But left-handed Hofners like Paul's aren't like this. The part that curves outward is on the top. Okay, so essentially what's happening here is that Hofner uses the same neck for both right and left-handed models, resulting in a reverse appearance on the lefties. Now this might not be the best thing to bring up in a video that's dedicated to Hofner bass guitars, but I have to say it. For all intents and purposes, the sound that most people associate with the Beatles bass sound isn't a Hofner at all. Now there's no doubt the Hofner violin bass is iconic, and it continues to be the mental picture most people have of Paul McCartney during his tenure with the Beatles. The issue with this is that our mental image doesn't always align with reality. And this happens to be the case with many, many Beatles tracks. If you ask any bass player, or, or any Beatles fan for that matter, to name their favorite McCartney bass lines, what do you think they're gonna say? Taxman? Rain? Hey Bulldog? When it comes down to it, almost every single time, people exclusively name songs that were not played on his Hofner, but a Rickenbacker 4001S. I even looked up several ranking lists of the top Beatles bass lines. Here's what SmartBassGuitar.com says are Paul's top bass lines, and guess what? Not a single one of them was played on the Hofner. Here's another list from Far Out Magazine. Five isolated bass tracks that prove Paul McCartney is a genius. Okay, every pick on the Rick. So who is this bass really for? Well, I bought it because I love the so-called early Beatles career. I grew up watching those movies, listening to those records, and for me, this bass represents my nostalgia for the Beatles. I also love how the Hofner is short scale, and it sort of encourages a more guitar-like approach to playing. The Rick definitely has a punchier sound, but for me, the Hofner will always be the true Beatle bass. That's all for today, and thank you for watching.